Blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle. And Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And to be called to serve him is the greatest privilege known to man. Now, as we continue to work our way through the book of 1 John, we pick up today in uh, verse 19 of chapter 2. Uh, verse 18 reads, Little children, it is the last time. Now, this was written 2,000 years ago, so obviously people have been saying it's the last time for a very long time. But keep in mind, Peter tells us that a 1,000 years with the Lord is as one day, and one day is the same as a 1,000 years. So even though 2,000 years have gone by since this writing, in the scheme of thinking of eternity, it's a very short time, just two days. Now, of course, this is figurative, but again, in the scope of eternity, time without end, 2,000 years is nothing. That's the idea that we're dealing with. So he says, little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard, Antichrist will come. Now, have they heard that? Because it's written throughout the first writing, the Old Testament, and specifically in the book of Daniel, talks about the Antichrist. Even now, there are Antichrist among us whereby we know that it is the last time. Verse 22 tells us that he that denies that Jesus is Christ, denies the Father and the Son, that is the spirit of Antichrist. That denial to accept Jesus Christ for whom he claimed to be, God in the flesh. And there were many in John's time, and there are many today. But look at verse 19. This is what's interesting, and this is what I want to focus on. They went out from us, but they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us. I can't read a passage like that without thinking about what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, when he said, wolves among us, wolves in sheep's clothing, they will appear to be righteous. They'll be polished and well presented on the outside. But their hearts are full of corruption, rebellion, and defiance to the Almighty and his commands. But they will sit among us. And the very reason that they will sit among us is to destroy us from the inside out. But the Savior, in order to eliminate that problem told us something that the church hasn't told us. Matter of fact, the church tells us the opposite. The church today, pastors today, would tell you that the church is for sinners. That's not Bible, friends. Let me give you an example. Matthew chapter 18, the first part of that chapter deals with church discipline. This is someone who is sinning on a repetitive basis and needs to be called out. You've gone to them, they don't listen, they don't heed your warning. You take two or more brethren to substantiate the fact that you're standing upon the word of God and not your own bias, and they still refuse to listen. You stand them up before the whole congregation, they still refuse to listen. You cast them out. You kick them out of the fellowship. Why? Because the church isn't for sinners. The church is for righteous people. And righteous people are simply people who, yes, they have sinned in the past, but their sins have been forgiven. They have put their sins behind them. They're walking in victory and they're striving for perfection. That's a saintly person, friend. That's a righteous person. We also see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Now we know that Paul received his teaching directly from Jesus Christ. Even though Jesus wasn't alive on planet earth at the time, Jesus was alive in heaven. Paul was ushered into heaven, set in, as a student before the Lord, and was taught the things of the Lord. And look what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. He says, Your glorying is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leavens a whole lump? Now, if you'll read the first part of this chapter, the first five verses, what you'll learn that there is someone in the fellowship who's claiming to be part of the fellowship, but they are living in a heathen lifestyle. They're not being obedient to the commandments of God. And Paul is writing to this young fellowship, and he says, look, you shouldn't be tolerating such things. You need to cast that person out, because if you don't, that person is going to destroy the entire fellowship. 
So get him out. And yet it seems what John is writing here in chapter 2, verse 19, is this idea that these people have been tolerated and maybe they've been so deceptive. I mean, Rick, remember now, when Jesus looked at the disciples, he said, one of you are, is about to betray me. And every single one of them said, is it I? Meaning that there was nothing about Judas that made them point the finger at Judas immediately and say, oh, you know what, I knew it. I knew you were the... No, apparently, Judas was a perfect wolf in sheep's clothing. And so it appears in 1 John chapter 2, these people are as well. They have sat among us for a lengthy period of time. And none of us stood upon the authority of Scripture to call them out, to hold them accountable, or utilized the gift of the discernment of spirits to be able to tell that these people were false. There was no one operating in the spirit using that gift for the benefit of the fellowship. And yet that's what we've been commanded to do. Look at, uh, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5, a little bit lower in the passage, in verse 12. He says, what have I to do to judge those who are without? He's talking about the sinful person who's outside the fellowship. What is, it's not my duty to judge them. That's what Paul says. Of course it's not. That's God's duty. Do we not judge those who are within? It's our duty to hold accountable to judge those who are within the fellowship. Remember, Jesus said you'll know a tree by the fruit that it bears. So if you come into the fellowship and you claim to be an apple tree, you better believe I'm looking for apples. Friends, we are about to enter a very decisive time in history. A time that has been written about more than any other in the Bible. A time that tells us that children will turn against their parents. Your brothers will turn against their sisters. And if that's true, you better believe that there are people in your congregation that will turn against you. Not everyone who worships with you are who they claim to be. You would be wise to keep your eyes open and allow the Spirit of God within you to expose the unfruitful works of darkness around you, for they are plenteous, friends. And if you knew the truth about what really lied in the heart of the person sitting next to you, behind you, in front of you, preaching from the pulpit to you, friend, you'd lock yourself in a room and never come out. Look at verse 20 in our text. You have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. The Spirit of God will throw up red flags to you about certain people. And you know, and you can't follow your intellect, and you can't follow your heart. You have to follow the Spirit of God who is speaking truth to you. So as we move deeper into these troublesome times that are coming, these difficult days that lie just ahead, friends, when it all comes down to it, there's only one thing that you can really be sure of. And that's your walk with God. Because no matter how much you believe in somebody else, you can be fooled. You can be deceived. And the Bible tells us that in those days, the very elect, the most studious, the most loyal, the most faithful, would be deceived if possible. You know who loves the Lord, friends. You know who is sincere. If the whole world was falling apart around you, if all hell was breaking loose on planet Earth, that one person that comes to mind that you would run to for answers, hope, and strength, that's the person that you should be pursuing a relationship with. What it all boils down to, friends, is we should see everyone as a wolf until they earn the right to be a sheep. Think about that today. Let that take root in your soul. Ponder that. None of us know the heart of each other, but we surely know our own hearts. Friends, I pray that as you walk with Messiah today, that you would take an x-ray of your heart and that you will inspect it very closely, microscopically, looking for any disparity, looking for any falsehood, looking for any deception that lies within you, 
and once discovered, go before your king in confession so that he may cleanse you from all self-filth and establish within you his righteousness that was accomplished by his sacrifice in his blood on Calvary some 2,000 years ago. Friends, I love you. I lift you to the Father. I pray that you'll do the same with us. Now, as he wills and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.